Awam, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Waha, Waka, Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashim, Ba means coming in, Ha means the, Sham means name, Waka means holy, Kodash means spirit. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will well and teach well because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect and shalom to you sincere brothers scattered abroad pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to you sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wah, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this lesson is going to be titled as Women Are to Be in Silence. Women, you Israelite women, so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indian women, you are to be in silence. Now, this lesson is titled as this is because I had a sister. She came on my comment board the other day speaking, you know, saying some Yahuwah. And I'm not going to put her up as an example. You know, I'm going to have mercy in this video. So I'm giving a warning out to you sisters out there. All right. Now, if you sisters, you know, I went on her channel. She said Yahuwah and all that. So I went on her channel and she had videos up. She had lessons that she did prior to in her channel so i'm letting you sisters know out here you cannot be teaching the scriptures you can't be going out to the highways and byways don't be going into walmart stores trying to teach the gospel don't try to go out on the highways and byways don't don't do no sit down lessons you don't need to do any of that okay you are an israelite woman all you is to do as an israelite woman is learn in silence what the lord requires for you to do is to learn in silence and serve your husband be a, a the best wife to your husband as you can be and if you are a woman out there that don't have a, a man or have a husband then you need to go and look for a man you need to get a man of the lord and you need to search for a man search for a husband a man because that's all that you are required to do as a woman is to have a husband and to serve your husband you don't need to teach the scriptures you don't need to do none of that so i'm gonna go in this lesson and bring this out because you got women that's reading that uh, that precept of Miriam being a prophetess. So we're going to give the understanding to that. All right. There's no woman that ever went out to the highways and the byways to teach the gospel. Not Mary Magdalene. She never went out to the highways and byways with the apostles. She didn't go out there teaching the word. She didn't do that. Right. Not Miriam. Not Ruth. None of them went to the highways and byways and taught the scriptures. Okay. Because you got, you know. These women, they'll try to use those scriptures to try to justify that it's okay for them to teach. But the Lord never spoke through a woman. There's no scripture that said that the Lord literally spoke through a woman to go out and teach the word. That's not in the scriptures. That's not in the Bible. Okay, so we're going to read this. Now, the precept that I'm going to start in is this precept right here. Because there's a lot of women that will read this scripture right here. And they'll get misconstrued with this scripture and they'll interpret in their own understanding, not according to the scriptures, but they'll grasp their own interpretation and they'll read this scripture here and they'll say, see, Miriam was a prophetess. So she went out to the, she went out there and she taught the word just like Moses and her brother Aaron did. No, the hell she didn't. A prophetess is a woman that's a wife of a prophet, a man of the Lord. So if you are a man of the Lord and you have a wife, she's a prophetess because she's married to you. Now, a prophetess is also a woman that has visions, not to go around teaching the scriptures, but they may have visions or they're a wife of a prophet, a, a wife of, of a prophet, a man of the Lord. So that woman, if you are a woman that have a husband and he's a man of the Lord and he's in the truth, you're a prophetess because your husband is a man of the Lord. That's all a prophetess is. It's not a woman to go out there to Walmart and teach in the scriptures and go on the highways and byways. It is dangerous for you women out there because you can get socked out by somebody. For one, you can get beat up. So a man can sock your ass out and you'll start seeing stars. Bad things can happen for you. So you don't need to be at that's That's a man's war zone. It is not a woman's war zone out there.
you will get knocked out out there, especially if you get into a altercation with somebody that's against the doctrine that you're teaching. You will get you will get beat up out there. It's not safe for women and children to be out there on the highways and byways. Only for the men. Exodus 15 and 20. Salakia for the rambling. It says, And Miriam, the prophetess, right, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with it says with timbrels and with dances. So you got women that read this scripture here and say, see, Miriam was a prophetess. Yeah, she was a prophetess. But let's see what a prophetess is. Now, let's get the true meaning of a prophetess. Because when you every time you go into the dictionary, they'll give you a variety of different meanings. But you got to really understand which one is the correct meaning. Because you'll get many different meanings. You see that? Now, look at this. It says a prophetess. It says a woman who speaks for God or deity or divine inspiration. Number two. It says a woman who foretells future events. Because a woman may have visions. But she don't fucking go out there and teach. Verse three. It says a woman who is... Who is a spokesperson of some doctrine, cause, or movement? That is incorrect, and the one at the t the one at the top is incorrect. The correct one is number four. Number four, it says the wife or female companion of a prophet. That is the correct meaning there. So it's a woman that either tells visions, right, which is number two and number four. Those are the two that's correct. I agree with that. Those are the, those are the two that's correct, though, because you got women that have visions. All right, they could they have visions. Okay, they talk about their vision, they have visions, but they don't go out there to highways and byways and teach the word. Okay, that's a prophet is a woman that is married to a, a man of the Lord, right? Or it's a woman that that sees visions, that tells foretells the visions that she saw, the dreams, visions. That's what a prophetess is, not teaching the scriptures though. That's not what a prophet is. So we're gonna see in the scriptures if the Lord spoke through women, because you got women that'll use that scripture there. So let's see if the Lord spoke through women. Right. Proverbs 8 and 4. It says unto you, O men. Does it say old women there? No. Unto you, O men, I call. See, and my voice is to the sons of men. The Lord always set up men to preach the gospel. The Lord always set up prophets to teach the gospel. Right. Let's prove it. The Lord always set up men to follow. That's why it says, O men, your voices I call. Jeremiah 1 and 5, because this is prophet Jeremiah. Right. Jeremiah 1 and 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Verse 6, Then said I, Then said I, Then said I, Ah, Lord power, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, said unto Jeremiah, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I commanded thee, thou shalt speak. You see that? So Jeremiah, he was a man of the Lord. The Lord came to him. The Lord spoke through many men. The Lord always spoke through men, right? He didn't speak through women. This is Luke 1 and 70, right? A prophet is a man of the Lord, which is a seer. A seer is a prophet. A prophet is a man to prophesy the prophecies that are due to come in the near future. That's what a prophet is, to prophesy the, the future prophecies, the future events that come before time. That's what a prophet is, right? It's not a woman, though. It's a, it's a, it's a man, an Israelite man. Luke 1 and 70, as he spake by the mouth of his, what? Holy prophets, right? Which have been since the world began. The Lord always had men set up. The Lord always spoke through his men, prophets, men. Not prophetists, prophets, men. Proverbs 8 and 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. So that's who the Lord speaks through. The Lord speaks through his men. The Lord always spoke through men. Right? This is 1 Timothy 2 and 11. So this is your order here. And actually, I'll get that in a minute. Let me get this. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Then we're going to go to that preset. Because this is what women need to understand. You women out there... That's claiming to be a, 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 a woman of the Lord. And this is the thing. It's a lot of you sisters that are new that do this. You, you guys still have the Christianity um, confirmation downloaded into your spirit. So when you come into this truth, you think that you can take the ways of Christianity of the 501c3. And you believe that you can do the same thing that you were doing in the Christianity world. You can't do that in the truth. 
Because when you come into the truth as a woman of the Lord, as an Israelite woman, you have to. There's a total. There's a total different order now, because when you come into this truth, you have to apply yourself according to the scriptures as well, and you have to fall in line, just like just like you is just like those Israelite men that be coming up with their own doctrines. You can't be coming up with your own doctrines. The Lord had men set up. You need to fall in line and learn from those men and teach the correct doctrine. You women come into this truth, you have to fall in line and you have to follow the scriptures ac ac according, accordingly as a woman of the Lord. So you have to learn in silence and you have to serve your husband. If you don't have a man, you need to find a man of the Lord and you need to serve him. That is your job. Learn in silence and serve a man until the Lord come back in total righteousness. So you can earn your spot to receive the kingdom of heaven. If you go contrary to that and do the opposite, trying to teach the word, try to do all this, say what you want to say, do what you want to do, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to receive judgment of the Lord because you're not following instructions according to the scriptures. You're not. First Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently in order. So you Israelite women have to let all things be done decently in order. And if you don't like this video, don't watch it. If you don't like this video, don't watch it. I'm not telling you to watch my videos, but you have to fall in line. You have to know your place. And you have to fall in line and you have to learn in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. This is 1 Timothy 2 and 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence. Did the, did the scriptures say, let the woman speak? No, it said, let the woman learn in silence. So you got to learn in silence. Not to speak, silence. Let me give you the meaning of that. Because it seems like women you women don't understand that. Not, I'm not talking about you sincere sisters out there. I'm talking about the ones that, that are new in the truth. The ones that don't understand the principles of this gospel. That don't understand the protocols of this thing, right? Silence. So now we gotta get this information out for you, to, so you can be able to receive and understand what this, this, what that word silence means. Because it's like it goes in one ear and out the other. Silence. Complete absence of sound. Right. Prohibit or prevent from speaking. That's what silence means. It don't mean talk. It don't mean flap gums. It don't mean any of that. It's telling you what. It says complete absence of sound. You see that? It says. Prohibit or prevent from speaking. Look at this. Look. Hush. Make be make someone be quiet or stop talking. Right. Shush. Tell or signal someone to be silent. That's what the scriptures is telling you to do. That's what the scriptures is commanding you to do. First Corinthians two and eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Right. Let's get the meaning for subjection. Subjection. The action of subjecting a country or person to one's control or the fact of being subjected. Right? See what else we can get. Subjugation. Subjugation. The action of bringing someone or something under dem damnation or control. So you got to fall in line. Be under subjection. Be quiet. Follow order. Don't flap gums. You know, learn in silence. It's okay to say shalom to the brother. Say shal shalom on my channel. I don't, I don't mind that. All praises to Yahweh by Shimei Ashai. The water, you know. I don't mind sister saying that. Y'all can say that on my comment board. Don't be afraid to say that. But when you come on my comment board and you say some Yahuwah, I'm going to investigate you. Because now I know that you're in a totally different doctrine than I am. I'm going to go on your channel. And I'm going to see who you following. I'm going to see what you believe in or what your doctrine is. And the moment I go on your channel and I see you teaching, you got videos up. You're going to get put up as an example. Now, that sister that did that, that has videos on her channel, I'm not going to put her up as an example. I'm going to have them be merciful to certain sisters because maybe she didn't know. Maybe she's new in the truth. I'm going to have mercy in this video because we got to be merciful. But some of you sisters, man, you guys got to learn the order that's set up. The scriptures tells you not to flap them gums. You can't be flapping them. You cannot be flapping them. And when I say that, there's women that come on my comment board. Well, I'm going to flap my gums. Well, go ahead and flap them. But you're going to be destroyed when the Lord come back because you're not following order. That's not my order. That's what the Lord requires. So if you're telling me that you're going to do what you want to do and flap your guns anyway, you're telling the Lord, F you, I'm going to do what I want to do. And the Lord is going to destroy you. You're going to send a deaf angel your way and the Lord is going to smite your ass. That's what's going to happen. So you can go ahead and be a demon if you want. But you're not hurting me none. You're making the Lord angry. This is 1 Timothy 2 and 12. It says, but I suffer not a woman to teach. So you don't teach the scriptures. You don't go to Walmart prophesying. You next thing you know you see a you see a woman Israelite creating her own garment, like Great Millstone having or like us creating their own garment. You know having hearts all on their garment. They go in there 
with a with a with a with a um with a Mitri going around their head, not having their head covered. They dress like us and they out there in the highways and byways teaching. That is off. That is off. And if you're a woman that's doing that, you're gonna be destroyed. Because that is not your order. That is a man's order. Your order is to learn in silence. Just learn the scriptures. Learn the scriptures in the house and serve your husband. Be the best wife that you can be to your husband. That's what's gonna earn you a place in the kingdom. That's what's gonna save you. That's what's gonna save you, your children, your household. Serving your husband, learning in silence, being obedient to your husband, serving your husband. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the easiest job to have. You try to try to do our job. You try to go out there and teach. Now you put you number one. You putting your life on the line in danger when you go out there to the streets and try to teach like us because you might deal with a heathen nation and you try to go up trying to do all that. He might get mad and sock you out. Then what you gonna do? You get socked out by a man on, on the highways and miles. Then what you gonna do? See us. We have we we are able to control that situation. Number one, we don't get emotional. We don't we don't do all that. You women are very emotional. So if somebody says something to you, you get mad, you try to call yourself hitting the man, you don't know order, that man gonna sock you out. Then then what you're gonna do when you get socked out? Then you're gonna grab your face and cry and try to call the police, try to make it like he's a bad thing, but you you made the decision to put your life out there. Put your life on the line for that that isn't necessary for you to do to begin with. You don't need to go out there and teach the scriptures. Don't put your life on a line. That's not your job. That's a man's job. First Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor absorb authority over the man. So you can't control your husband. You can't be telling him what to do. You can't be saying you wear the pants. You can't be doing none of that. You have to serve your husband. Your husband is your head. You got to fall in pursuit. And these, you know, these women that may come on my video may get upset about it and say they don't need to do that. Then don't be in the truth. If you don't want to serve your husband... Right. And you don't want to fall in line and follow the instructions of your husband because your husband is your head. If you don't like that, then don't be in the truth, because guess what? You're not following protocols according to what the Lord wants for you to do as an Israelite woman. And you're going to find yourself being destroyed. That's what's going to happen to you. That's what's going to happen to you. First Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to observe authority over the man, but to be in silence. And we went into the meaning of the word silence. So you can't be flapping gums in this truth. Flapping gums is a very dangerous thing for you women. Don't upload no videos. Don't teach the scriptures. Don't do no motivational speeches on your channel and trying to quote scriptures. Don't do any of that. Learn in silence. Serve your husband. If you don't have a man, get a man of the Lord and serve that man. That's what you need to do. And if you don't want to do that, then hey, your choice is going to either be in silence or that's it. You got to follow one of those two, both of those protocols there. Learn in silence and serving a man. That's it. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is permitted to them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, also say of the law. So don't, don't flap no gums. Don't post no scriptures up. Don't do any of that. Just learn in silence. It's not hard. It's an easy task. 35. And if they will learn anything, see, but if you learn anything, right, let them ask their husbands at home. So you don't go to another Israelite. If you have a husband, a man, and I've seen women do this shit on Instagram. You got women, you got wives that are in Sakari. I've seen this happen. You got wives that's in Sakari. They be adding other brothers from other groups and then ask them questions. And then when they, you know, when they answer their questions, this is why they always tell us we don't need to be answering no woman's questions, man. You know, they answer the question. Then that woman is going back to her husband and saying what this dude did. Then you got the husband hitting you up, telling you you're just in that, this, this, and that, getting you into a confrontation. So if you're a woman that have questions and you have a man, you need to talk to your man. Don't be fucking talking to us. You a woman that got a man of the Lord, a man that's in the truth, you don't need to be fucking talking to us. And you don't need to be talking to me. You got a man, I don't even want, I don't want no fucking questions from you. Don't talk to me. Because you're putting me in a bad situation and you're putting other brothers in a bad situation. I've seen that shit happen too. You even got women doing that on YouTube now. Going on brothers' channels. They got a husband and they're going on brothers' channels. And they're talking to brothers, asking brothers questions. And then they're tail bearing and going back to their husband. Their husband is a member of an Israelite, another Israelite group. And you're getting brothers put in the mix. Stop fucking doing that. Stop doing that too. Because you women that are doing that, the Lord going to have judgment on you for that too. Because that's starting, that's starting problems there. And we ain't about problems. You women always want to see commotion going on. That's why you, why you women are damn demons in sheep clothing. Y'all demons in sheep clothing. Not all you Israelite sisters. I'm not talking about you sincere sisters. I'm talking about these damn, these Israelite women cl claiming to be in the truth. And they doing that. They're talking to other men while they got men of the Lord. They got men that's in other camps. Y'all got to stop doing that too. 
Verse 35, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So you can't be flapping your gums. And if you want to learn and you have a man, you need to learn from your man. If your man is not in the truth, send your man to the men of the Lord so he can learn this truth. If he can try to get this truth. Now, if he don't want to get this truth and he don't, because I had questions like that too. I had a Eve to call my convoy say, well, what if my husband, he don't want to get the truth? Then let him be. There's a scripture that if you're in the truth, you can save your husband. If you're in the truth, if you're following Great Millstone, you're learning the doctrine, you're, you're having the faith in the Lord, you're about Shema Shai, your husband can be saved. There's a precept in there. There's a precept in there called household salvation, where just because your husband ain't in the truth, that don't mean that you're going to be destroyed. But your husband can be saved because you're in the truth. Long as he's pleased to dwell with you, he ain't got a problem with you being in the truth, and you're praising the Lord, you're serving the Lord, and he's just pleased to dwell with you, your husband can receive salvation. And the same thing for us. We may have women that's not in the truth. I don't have a woman anymore, but other brothers do. They have wives, and some brothers may have wives that may not believe in this truth, but they can still be saved because their husband is in the truth. Their men that they're with is in the truth, so they can be saved, and that's in the scriptures, the other way around. You know, so those stuff like that, you don't need to worry about that. <clears throat> so it's a law. It's according to the scriptures. You already be in silence. Ephesians 5, Salakia. Ephesians 5 and 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto, it says, as unto the Lord. So you're supposed to serve your husband, submit yourself unto your husband, be submissive. And you got a lot of women that have a problem with being submissive. Then at the end of the day, if you're not going to be submissive to your husband, then there's a problem there. You just, you're against the Lord. You don't love the Lord. If you're against your, if you're against the husband. You're against to being submissive to your husband, then you you're against to being submissive to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Why would you say you love the Lord, but you don't only want to be submissive to your own husband? If you can't be submissive to your own husband, there's no way in hell that you're going to be submissive to the Lord. You don't need to praise the Lord then. Because that's the order that's set up, whether you like whether you like it or not. Ephesians 5 and 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. You see that? So your husband, your man, if you have a man, he's your head. And you have to follow everything of what he tells you. Whether you may be things that you may not like to hear that he don't want you to do, you have to follow that. He don't want you dressing a certain way, then you can't be dressing a certain way. He requires you to be in the house and he wants you at home, you have to be at home. You have to follow pursuit of what your husband tells you to do because he's your head. He is your head. You got to follow orders. You have to follow instructions. That's just the way it is, how it is, man. All right? And you can't get mad about that. You see Ephesians 5 and 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Shai is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So there you go. You have to serve your husband. You have to serve your husband. There's no if or ands or buts about that. You have to serve your husband. First Timothy 2 and 13. For Adam, you see that, was first formed, then Eve. Not Eve first, then Adam. Adam, then Eve. You see that? And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So there you go. It's not a woman bashing video, but... Your husband is your head. The woman is the weaker vessel. You women, learn in silence, serve your husband. That's all you need to do. You don't need to go on the highways and byways. You don't need to be prophesying, teaching the scriptures. You don't need to be doing that. Just learn in silence. Not difficult. Not challenging. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Dash, and double honors to my elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you, sincere sisters, that's listening in silence, as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. So you sincere, you sincere sisters out there, learn in silence. To you sisters that's new in the truth, learn in silence. Don't post no scriptures on our comment boards. Don't do no videos, no lessons. Don't go out to the highways and byways. Don't make you no garment. Don't even think about prophesying out there. Learn in silence. Serve your husband. If you don't have a man, find a man of the Lord and serve him in righteousness to the end so you can be of that elect. Lord willingness, that's edifying. On to the next one. Shalom.